Sup people, how's it going? This is Emilio Lopez, and I am going to be, well, I'm going to be commenting over some drawing here for you guys. Uh, what we're going to be doing here is essentially, this is a pre-recorded bit of a drawing that I did for geek.com. Uh, it's a featured image that was in a, a recent article that uh, Tony did with me about Contra Rocco's artwork. So here we have is just, I can't, look, obviously I couldn't show it at the time, so you know, uh, I figured I recorded it so that you can show you guys later. Uh, right here, I'm kind of demonstrating the um, the resolution that we were actually drawing these comic book these comics at. Uh, normal resolution in general is going to be t uh, 1080. Uh, that's pretty much standard. 4K, that's that, and 8K. So you're gonna I'm gonna write it here right now. <laughs> set an 8k right there just to show you the differences of the sizes of artwork that well that we did for the sh for the for the uh, motion comic uh we kind of um wanted to be able to zoom into different uh characters and all kinds of other stuff so here is the drawing uh, i actually did this sketch on the um on the way pretty much going into uh to uh 4k uh excuse me konami cross media Every single day, I took about a two to three hour bus ride every single day to get there and do the motion comics because they wanted me to be in house. So I'm traveling up from Pennsylvania to New York City. So yeah, about four hours of four hours four hours of my day was uh, devoted to traveling in and out of New York. Uh, if you guys look at the bottom of the screen, you notice that there's a promo code that showed up there. That's for Insert Coin. If you guys are interested in going, getting some really cool swag from Insert Coin, they were nice and gave me a, a cool code. So here's my reference. Uh, you might notice that uh, you saw Kaiser was bald. Uh, <laughs> That's because whenever you, uh, if you have an OBJ file and you're just kind of doing a quick render it uh, in Photoshop, it will not uh it will not it will not um render um tr sort of transparent um item uh, items like hair and and stuff like that like you know the cards that are used for hair and stuff because they're semi transparent and stuff so yeah that's why kaiser here is bald in the 3d artwork there <laughs> So yeah, uh, I themed all the music to uh, some fun stuff. So we have a bunch of Contra-esque music. There is at least one um, bit of fan music that's in this. So uh, you guys, uh, I'll let you know when that guy when that shows up and tell you who the YouTuber is because uh, I'm running some of this music off of uh, my own playlist and also YouTube. So pretty much what I'm going to be doing in this in this session of this drawing session is going I'm going to be essentially solidifying the actual drawing, uh, probably mostly inking it, uh, and then there might be some adjustments that I'll do later on. All right. And you might see so every so often you might see a couple of notes here and there just uh, to kind of uh, I let myself. I actually need to let myself know in the future when I'm done. So you'll see like, you know, ink done or something like that. I can't exactly remember what I wrote on it. There we go, some music. <laughs> it's funny, the music was playing, but then... Uh, but we'll, we'll get this hammered out until tomorrow. But uh, I guess I was talking to, <laughs> to an empty background.
This song is a song from uh, Contra Rogue Corps, actually. Uh, so yeah, but those of you who have joined me right now or are watching, uh, uh, this is a pre-recorded session uh, that I did drawing the uh, featured image for Geek.com uh, for an interview that I did with uh, Tony Polanco, who is our host on The Throwdown. Um, just, uh, I, I've, you know, the time I kind of came up with the idea where it's like, you know, like, why don't we make this sort of thing special? I mean, this is kind of like the first time that Tony's actually, and I have actually done a real, like, interview talk together on anything, especially in, in the industry, because we kind of work on two different sides of the industry. You know, I work on the art and, and all that sort of stuff, and he works on the media side. So I decided uh, maybe it would be cool, and I had to also have to make sure this was cool with our PR guys on uh Contra that, you know, it'd be cool to kind of do a kind of a fun art piece of artwork. I have actually um, offered to do artwork for a lot of different sites uh, who were during the promotion of this game, but unfortunately none of them really took it, you know, took took me up on that offer, with the exception of Geek.com. The one thing I believe, like, whenever you're, you're doing sort of promotion, like, I, I feel like sometimes you need to have... Um, something special for, for people to kind of keep going to other places. It's like, what's that one unique thing that will um, uh, attract pe people to that thing? So I thought the best, best thing to do would be like, hey, let's do some fun, cool artwork of our main character for uh, Contra, uh, Kaiser here. So I don't know the full details about... Um, about the composers for this game, but I do know that the uh, some former Metal Gear um, sound guys actually did work on this game. So, and in fact, like when we were doing um, uh, the motion comics, they were actually giving us comments on on how they well, how how ways to when we could improve the uh, the sound design in our motion comics, which was pretty awesome. So these Im this image is essentially, uh, I drew it before the final release of the three motion comics that uh, that that are, have been showing up pretty recently. But my sn my sneaky little thing was, I knew that they were going to be released in a certain time frame, somewhere close to where we were going to be releasing the um, so so I, somewhere close where we were going to be doing the interview because me and Tony did an, the interview maybe a few weeks ahead of time. So uh, so my idea was since we're working on the motion comics, I was going to do a piece that was a kind of a a call forward to the new motion comics that we we're going to be releasing online. So this image looks very similar. You'll see when it's done. Uh, also, if you look at the article on Geek.com, you can see the finished product, but you notice that it it looks very similar to a moment inside of the motion comic, which we did. And I did that on purpose. So yeah, if you, I see a few of you are watching right now, um, feel free to ask any sort of questions. You know, it also doesn't actually need to be Contra related. It could also just be art related. Uh, so, to give you an idea of the time frame that I drew this, I drew this at, uh, I think we were doing an episode of, th of, th of Throwdown, and I pretty much did it while, we're, uh, <laughs> while we were uh, on air. So I'm recording this in OBS while we're doing a Throwdown episode. I don't exactly remember which one, but I know I was drawing it at the time. So, which is pretty funny. Yeah, just checking up so I guess you guys are wondering why this what I'm doing right now uh, 
Right now, I'm actually working on Pages for Excellence, which is uh, the comic book that I'm doing with Kari Randolph and Brendan Thomas for Image slash Skybound Entertainment. Um, obviously, I can't show any of that sort of stuff, so sometimes it's actually kind of good that I'll do these sort of canned, semi-canned streams so that I can still do, you know, still stream for you guys and do things like this, but also also continue to do my work maybe one day uh in the future if anybody's interested if you would like to see me do a uh, an episode of throwdown draws where i actually kind of go into detail as to the job that my actual job that i my well not my actual job the job that i do in comics if you want to any sort of videos of that i can actually you know put those together but you know just let me know if you want it i know a couple of you guys out there really wanted me to do episodes of throwdown draws But uh, unfortunately, I haven't had much time to do much of these episodes. It's just been so busy. Uh, in the in the time in this time in, from the beginning, literally from the last year to this year, I've been pretty much just working my ass off on a bunch of different projects that all cross over at the same time. So it's been like I've been working on excellence. I've been working on excellence. I'm, I've been working on Contra. I've been uh, right before, uh, um, right after Contra, um, the first the batch of motion comics uh, released. You know, well, we actually shipped them over to Japan for the game. Um, I uh, and we started to, to ramp up for the online motion comics. We, um, I, I actually had another motion comic project, which was. Um, which was a carnage thing for Marvel. So uh, I'm literally working on all these different things. Not only that, but also trying to do my own stuff at the same time. Absolutely no time for gaming. <laughs> I think I, um, when I got Kingdom Hearts, uh, I just couldn't, I couldn't play it at all because I was just too busy just traveling and I'm just trying to get work done. On the bus into New York City, I would essentially just um, uh, color my my comic pages, and then once I got into Konami, then I get to work, then get on the bus, work on some more comic pages. In fact, the book that um, that I was working on at the time. Which took me a lot longer than it should have, which is issue six of Excellent, which is coming out tomorrow. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's really great to have that one out. That one's actually going to be is actually a little bit of a larger issue. We got more pages on it, so we have some more, you know, cool stuff in it. So the music that you're hearing here is a mixture of music from Contra Road Core. Uh, this music right here is from Contra Evolution, I think. We have a little bit of everything in here, so. Yeah, we have uh, some, some Contra Evolution, we have Contra Road Core, we got some classic Contra music in here, so it's a, it's a bit of a mix. So yeah, if you can, if guys, if you're if you're watching and you're you know on Twitch, feel free to comment and ask any sort of questions that you might have. Uh, I'm open here. So, also by the way, um, if you look on the screen, uh, it just passed a little bit ago. Uh, you'll see my code for insert coin. If you guys ever want to pick up some cool, you know, Konami slash Metal Gear swag, they actually have some really good stuff. Um, insert coin was really cool and provided me with a code. And he also saw, sent me a nice jacket. He sent me a, what is it, a Diamond Dog jacket, which was really awesome. 
Uh, you probably, if you've gone to any sort of conventions recently, you probably see me wearing it. I was actually wearing it at the Contra World Core um, uh, Twitch event, which happened pretty recently. That uh, that event was actually pretty awesome. Like I got to, I got to, get, got to hang out with uh, some of my, the, my my friends that I know over at Konami, uh, and uh, you know Konami um, El Segundo, uh, those guys, and a bunch of really cool dudes there. Uh, and uh, I got to hang out. I got to talk to a little bit with Nakazato-san. Uh, you know, it's, you know, it's funny about like, like. You know, interacting with people from from who don't speak the same language, I always feel like weird because I don't know who to talk to. So like, it's either talk to the like, you, are you talking talk to the person or you talk to the interpreter? It's never. I always feel a really weird. So like, whenever whenever I sort of commun sort of communicated with Nakazato, if I didn't have any sort of specific questions, it was mostly like. You know, um, was it action? Readable actions, you know, like physical actions. So I gave him. I uh, actually at the event, I actually did some drawings for people, uh, some contra drawings. So I drew Nakazato. I drew Nakazato Kaiser. I drew um, Benjamin Kenny, who um, our uh, marketing and slash everything guy at Akami. I drew him. Uh, what's that? Gentleman. And I drew a couple of the other guys, other things, and I gave away little thing, little my one of my little art books and stuff like that. So it was a really nice event. The weirdest thing about that event, though, was, was like it was so like me, me and Tony have been me and Tony have been working together, you know, doing known each other forever. Oh, uh, let me quick uh, side note on this: this music that you're hearing right now is not official music it's actually done by a fan uh let me just get his youtube information his name is michael uh S S sabin uh so if you guys um do a search on michael sabin he does really awesome like metal covers of video game music so uh this is actually the music for uh contra hardcore which, uh, fun enough, is Nakazato-san's uh, personal favorite of the Contra games that he's worked on, which is pretty awesome. So where was? Oh yeah, so I was talking about Tony, and uh, literally, like we we've known each other for a long time. We've you know we've done you know early on, uh, you know we used to do game coverage on a site called STFU and play and um, you know he was writing for them and stuff like that and he's kind of gone on to bigger better things but this is like the first time where our professional paths have kind of crossed <laughs> officially because he does again he does media and I do artwork and you know game stuff and comics and stuff like that so this is the first time where our our paths cross so I'm going there to help promote uh, Contra Rocor and talk about the artwork and interact with all of the media over there. Meanwhile, he's media and he's been invited over to play the video game, which is this is pretty kind of is pretty cool. So it's like we're meeting uh, <laughs> meeting again in, in again uh, over over this thing that that I'm doing, which is pretty pretty awesome. The uh, Contra Rocor event was held at like. Amazon slash Twitch in Seattle. Super cool people over there. Um, I've never been to Seattle before, and it was it was actually a really nice experience. Um, so, and uh, the fun thing is also I got to see some of my friends who've moved over there. Uh, some really close friends that had moved moved to Seattle a few a few years ago for work. Or for just in general, just moving. So we kind of, me and Tony, kind of connected our connected our friends, you know, from different areas, you know. So like they obviously had never known each other. We just kind of known them both separately. So we just kind of 
essentially, you know, because they don't know a lot of people living out there in Seattle. They're just kind of just building relationships and things. They kind of moved there, like both of them moved there, and there were no, they didn't really know anybody. So it's like kind of fun. We just sort of connected them, like, hey, you know, you guys want to hang out together? It's all good. <laughs> so yeah, like it was just a lot of fun times. Uh, when we were, um, <laughs> so when I, uh, when we at the end of, so okay, on the first day when I came in for the event, I went. Um, like I got in at like 9 a.m. in the morning, like crazy o'clock in the morning. I had to get up at like 6 or 5 a.m. in the morning to get on the plane. Anyway, I land and the first thing we, we had to do on that day was essentially a run through and slash practice for the stream that we were going to be doing the, the following day. So uh, as soon as I got there, I, you know, dropped my bags off and then I got onto the train and went up to, uh, um, went up to, to Amazon to, to do the practice and uh, we, we just kind of did an additional run through you know just to kind of have different you know what we're gonna do semi what we're gonna say also so that the host uh, the host that we have can actually do notes and kind of help uh, kind of direct the the conversation a little bit so you know like you know tell us what our roles are on the game and all that other stuff so it was pretty great, pretty cool. So we finished, and I, I think we finished around. It was it was a pretty long time that we we um, were there. Like we went, we were there initially. We did like a talk with the, the Nakazato, myself, and Benjamin, and all the guys. We all talked to the you know to the Twitch people. You know, had like a little presentation beforehand, and then after that, we just went down. We had lunch, and then we went to the. Um, to do, just do the practice and then what they would do is like they obviously they check all the mics on us and they do all that really cool stuff to kind of just get everything kind of set up uh, and then we just kind of went through a run through we just wait you know wait for our thing you do a little bit of a talk which is about the same amount of time as the as what's going to be on the air and then we just um, went through it and I think we finished at around five I want to say so it's kind of a long thing them trying to hammer out the details and all kinds of stuff like that. So after we, so when we were coming back to the hotel, like I hitched a ride with um, with uh, some of the Konami folks back to, the, to back to my hotel because our hotel, the hotel I was staying at over there, was also the same hotel that all of a lot of the games media was also um, staying at. So. Uh, which was really cool because I also got to interact with a lot of the, the a lot of the folks before, you know, I had gotten to to do the we did the stream on Twitch. Sup, folks? How's it going? I see there's a few of you in here. So yeah, if you have any questions about the artwork or Contra Road Core or any other things, feel free to ask. So right now, uh, just Kaiser and uh, originally earlier on in the video, for those who didn't see it, I demonstrated how um, the actual sizing of the um, uh, of the artwork that we drew for Contra Roca. You look to the left side; that's actually that's actually a piece that was used in um, in uh, in the motion comics, which I'm basing my the you know my inking off of on, on the right side. Top you're gonna see is a bald Kaiser. Uh, bald Kaiser, <laughs> Kaiser's bald because he can't. Because when I exported him, uh, especially when you use Photoshop or OBJ files, you can't um, like carded things, like things like hair and stuff. For some reason, don't show up. Obviously, it's, it's probably just the way those things are kind of programmed or whatever. But it also helps because you know you get a better look at what Kaiser looks like. At least for me. You may notice that there's no cigar in his mouth. Um, 
uh, for a lot of the media that we did for it, we had to remove the, the cigar, obviously, because we don't want to be advertising it. But in the game, you know, in, in gameplay and in the cinematics, he has his cigar and it's smoking and stuff like that. Funny thing, when we were, um, when we were, um, when this got graded by the ESRB, right, um, they actually didn't, um, mention, um, cigar smoke in the, in the rating, which is pretty funny. <laughs> So we, we literally like, like the, the because like when we were initially doing, thanks a lot. Yeah, I wish I could do more streams, man. So what was I, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. So like during, so when we were doing the ESRB, right? Uh, rating system on this uh, apparently usually what, what came up like at least initially before we had even um, submitted the game was there might have been a possibility that the cigarette the cigar smoke might have been a problem for Kaiser to, to have in the game and this kind of came at toward the tail end of the motion of our motion comic and the, the idea almost came up that we may have had to adjust essentially adjust all the artwork for the motion comic uh, luckily, it didn't happen. But the other funny thing is that when we thought it was going to be a problem that there was a cig there's a cigar in the game or cigar in, on, in Kaiser's mouth, the ESRB didn't actually put that on the box. So Kaiser has a, the cigar smoke, but he the cigar in his mouth, but it never put they don't put the you didn't put the usual like cigar you know smoking cig or smoking as one of the the objectionable things that the game has. Though, I mean, I, you know, the one thing I found kind of interesting is I, I probably, we probably got an impermature rating because of the language in the game. But, like, I don't know, in the, but the actual game itself, there's not really that much, like, all the blood is all kind of goof, goofy colored blood. It's all, like, blue and purple and everything but red. But I think we probably got the, the, M, the, the impermature rating because of our language. Initially, when we were doing the the scripts and stuff for the game, like we didn't originally, the idea was to make the game uh, a rate like a rated M sort of game. So that's why we were okay with the with the, um, the we had the cigar in there because otherwise he wouldn't have that if it was like a, a lower rated game. But um, there was also like little talks like maybe we should make it a T for teen game and stuff like that, and that's where the cigar. Um, the cigar talk started on that. So what song? Where is this song? From? Oh, this one's another Contra Evolution song. But yeah, I tried to populate all the music, the, the the music that's all playing here, with different eras of Contra. Some, some will be fun. But uh, I put the Contra Evolution stuff in here because I, I, they sound really good. Like, I know people don't, I'm not sure how people reacted to that game, but uh, the music in it's really awesome. It's like nice remixes of classic, um, classic uh, Contra themes from all the different games. Yeah, I would love to do a lot more streams like this, but unfortunately, I just don't have the time, and um, I kind of have to do ideas like this. Like a, a lot of the projects that I work on are really like sensitive. Like as far as like, if I wanted to show you guys stuff that I was working on for Excellence, I can't show you that for Contra Rocar or you know the Contra stuff that I was doing. All that I couldn't show because it's just you know it was all before the game had been announced or any of that stuff. But it's actually kind of cool seeing all that stuff show up at the end. You know, like, finally be able to show it all, right? So, 
So, um, we did, uh, so, so, take, let's see, what else should I talk about? Uh, yeah, so, like, I guess I go talk to you about the, the, the reference artwork I have sitting on the left side of the bottom left. That, uh, was a, uh, as I said before, it was a piece that was used inside of the motion comics, the most recent online motion comics. So we did about three motion comics, which were pretty awesome because... In those, we actually got to have Bill and Lance in it, and we also got to visit all the, the some of the class like classic places from the original Contra game. So what I did was, um, like, initially when I first started on it, and I actually started uh, working on this at E3 or a little bit before E3. I drew um, I, what, what they originally because you know scripts were being finalized. What they did is they had me do some designs for Bill and Lance. They had me do um, some pro like kind of uh, artwork that's kind of based off of classic Contra stuff. So they kind of had me, they had me draw the classic Bill and Lance awesome pose from the, the thing, but they're they're made in layers so that they could be moved and their arms are all kind of can be moved. And yeah, so when I redes I didn't fully redesign Bill and Lance. I just semi-modernized their equipment a little bit. Um, I, it's not, they're not, they're not like, I just kind of gave them like different, a little bit of um, some cooler looking gloves. Like they have a little bit more detail on them and, and their, their pant, their buckle is a little bit different. But other than that, I try, I really wanted to keep their, their look similar to, to what, what is kind of thought of as Bill and Lance. So like I didn't I didn't I, I wasn't about to try to deviate from what was already gonna work. It's just maybe like okay now since you don't see them as 2D sprites right what does that look like? So that's what I did. So I kind of gave them different a little bit of little 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 bit of details here and there and stuff like that. So what I did was I the the, the pieces of art that I drew which uh, some of them didn't get used was. Uh, I drew the classic pose, so obviously that you saw, and then I also drew all the, the uh, so all the arcade cabinet versions of them. So like, um, if you've seen the original arcade cabinets for Contra, right? There are these kind of two photos of these two guys. Um, I think they used them for both for Super Contra and Super Contra. So I just essentially drew their their those sorts of poses, as well as a couple of other ones. And some of them were used in the motion comic, and some of them weren't. I'd say but it was really fun kind of being able to go back and and go in and draw those characters uh um at one portion of it i actually drew um what is it we we have a lot of uh, environments that are from the first game showing up in our in our most first motion in um, the online motion comics so it's kind of adapting those ideas into other stuff into into like into more developed pieces of artwork. So, like the waterfall section, I actually, if you look on my Twitter, I um, I figured out where I could put um, Bill and Lance to where I could get the view of them looking up at the giant um, fortress slash monster that's sitting at the top. I even I even posted a little arrow pointing where where it was on there. And there's also a lot of other Easter eggs that I've hid in, inside of Contra in the in both the game motion comic and the um, the online motion comics. Uh, in the beginning of um, in in the first shot, there's actually a, a Snatcher reference. Um, we were just listening to the um, Contra Hardcore soundtrack. Um, you can't see it, but the, the street sign is the name of the female protagonist in that game. Uh, if you look on the top right of it. Um, there's also, like, if you look on the, the, the marquee of the board going by, there's also a couple of fun other Easter eggs. Um, also, yeah, so, like, I kind of work in a range of Konami references into the Lumo Motion comics. At least the segment, sections that I actually did.
So yeah, if you have any sort of questions about the work or you know any of the work that I've done or the stuff I've done on Contra, feel free to ask. Uh, let's say one of the things that I um, that I did like initially getting onto this project was like. It was kind of a chance sort of thing that sort of happened. I think it was in August of last year or uh, maybe even before that, June. And um, I was, what's up? Hey, what's up, Siki? Yo, man, you arting? <laughs> So you have a you have a big old a big old twenty four hour stream coming, don't you? Hey, wait a minute. We're gonna run this back. That's not good. We gotta do this the right way. Am I gonna be doing extra life? <laughs> I do. It's funny because I almost. I. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I. I could never do a 24-hour thing. I mean, granted, I do stay up close to 24 hours working, so I could do it. <laughs> I'll definitely be around to watch you. I don't even what what, um, what games are you gonna be playing? <laughs> Will you be playing your games? wonder if a lot of these guys still work at Konami like the, the guys the, like the composer of this soundtrack are they still there it's funny because like it was it was it, it was a surprise even then like when I heard when when we first started on Contra like I'm like okay like so who's doing it and they're like oh it's um the guy who did who, uh, who did work on um produced the stuff on um and directed um, Contra 3 and did work and Contra Hardcore and the director of Rocket Knight Adventure. I'm like, wait, that guy still works there? So it was, it was interesting, like, when, you know, just hearing that, that, like, one of the things is, like, especially when it comes to a lot of the creators beside, um, the more well-known Konami guys, right? Like, you know, Kojima and, and Igarashi and the creator of you know the guys who created Silent Hill, right? Those are names that you always hear all the time. But then you don't you don't hear these guys. You don't hear guys like Nakazato or if any of the other guys still work over there. It's, uh, so Siki says I'm going to be playing with my bro in law in the same room uh, same room so it'll probably be a uh, a lot of co-op stuff like borderlands or something well what am i playing lately uh so right now i'm <laughs> i'm i'm trying to get through bloodstained so my okay so this is what my gaming plan was my gaming plan was before to see if i before getting deep into Contra and deep into all the work I was doing, right? It was um, Kingdom Hearts, I, which I finished like five months later after I, after it came out um, or something like that. I can't remember. Yeah, a few months later. because And then it was going to be Bloodstained because Bloodstained is coming. I, I'm working on Bloodstained right now. I have Control, which I really want to play. And then there's... Uh, Shenmue and Death Stranding, and I think that's my my year of games so far. But um, 
I think I'm gonna skip control and put it after Dust Straining because I feel like Bloodstained, Bloodstained's like, there's so much to do in that game. Like, I've, and I, and I usually like to play all and get everything inside of it. So right now I'm just playing Bloodstained and, and rocking that in that one. It's a really fun game. Just, it's, it's amazing how much they put into that, into that game. But I mean, granted, it did take them like four or five years, right? Three years, something like that. I think it was announced at the same time as uh, Death Stranding, or close to it. I'm, I'm looking forward to Shenmue because I hear like it's. I, I know some people are probably not gonna like like it because it's kind of a bit of a throwback. Like, in more ways than one, from at least from what some people have been saying. So, yeah. Uh, one game I know I will not be playing is uh, Last of Us 2. Because, I, I don't know, I... It's not that I, I don't ha hate that game, it's just like, I just don't like that world. It's just so depressing and horrible. I could only really bring myself to play Last of Us once. The original one. And I felt like the ending was good as is. <laughs> you have no desire to play Shenmue. I can see that, man. I feel like the... Not I feel like the... The weird part of it is like, because it's taken so long to get this one, I think for a lot of people the sort of novelty is kind of worn off for Shenmue a little bit. But um, I'm interested in playing it. I haven't play actually played Shenmue 2. I, I just find it, I, I don't know, I played the original Shenmue and then when they put it on Xbox I really didn't go for it. I never, I never bought it, I bought an Xbox or anything for it. So it's out on PlayStation 4, but uh, they kind of just did a bare bones port. They really didn't do anything to it, like improve any of the textures or, you know, do essentially do what some of what Square has been doing as of late, where they're essentially re, you know, they're painting new textures or putting in new models, you know, uh, new um, character models inside the game. Though I'm not, I'm not gonna play. Shenmue is probably gonna be my deep winter game. Um, like while everybody's playing Last of Us 2, I'm probably gonna go in and be playing um, Shenmue. I have no like. There's like a lot of like. There's so many games that are coming out. Like I really don't. I, I'm really just not interested in playing a lot of them. Like, I don't play any of those Call of Duty games. I kind of... I'm not really into shooting sort of games. Even my favorite... My most favorite game franchise, right? Like Metal Gear. I actually don't like all the shooting in it. <laughs> and I'm glad that the... I like that... I mean, I, I, I mostly use the tranquilizer dart and everything. For me, like, I like games with, like, me like a lot of like, games that have melee in them. Like, I kind of miss, like, beat-em-ups. Sup, Barry Burton? How's it going? And everybody in here has been good. We don't have a bunch of rowdies. <laughs> The one, the one thing I do like, I, I do like about the the Metal Gear games, is that at least the later ones that they started doing is that they allowed, they weren't, they're a little more forgiving if you screwed up. But like those, those like the original Metal Gear on Nintendo, or like 
even solid. Like, you get seen, you just get your ass whipped. Yeah, I, uh... Seeky says, yo, oh yeah, I play Metal Gear as stealth. I'll try out, uh... Try out the run and gun stuff once. But for me, it's about trying to... Uh, to go uh, completely undetected. Uh, That's the same here for me, too. Who is the composer of this game? Uh, for Contra, Super Contra, or Contra 3, The Alien Wars. So, um, the uh, Contra Rogue Core games take place after The Alien Wars. At least that's the way um, we, um, Nakazato and, and, the, and the writers um, said it was. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of fun that, uh, that they're kind of did that did a little of that <laughs> so so fun so fun so okay couple of in fun, interesting things happened while uh, while 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 doing stuff for this game so uh, one of the things is that having my having my stuff reviewed having my stuff reviewed by people that I know so uh <laughs> on uh what is it? Um, I I know the I know the um, the uh, the writer on IGN who wrote the art the, the the review for Contra Road Core, and uh, <laughs> it's funny it's funny having something that you worked on laid in getting laid, laid into by somebody that you know. I don't usually I don't take I don't take that sort of stuff personally. To be honest, it's like it's not my it's not my it's it's what. A person thinks of whatever was created and for me it's like you know what you can say what you need to because it, it's your perspective of what this is so I just look like <laughs> I'm like just like like all right that's fine and then um, another another friend of mine uh, you know well, an acquaintance of mine actually sent me <laughs> sent me before before the review it went up they literally were like hey uh, I kind of lay into this game pretty damn hard uh, Sorry, man. I'm like, what? What's to be sorry about, man? Like, if you didn't like the game, I'd much, ra much rather you be honest about you not liking the game than just you kind of, you know, playing kid gloves with me or, or any, you know, kid, kid gloves because I worked on the damn thing. I'm like, hey, if it's, if you didn't like the game, then you didn't like it. I mean, that's, I can't, I can't help that. To be honest, it's like, if you're, it tries me might, you know, and, uh, and those of you out there who do create for a living, tries you might, you obviously want somebody to enjoy the things that you create, but that's not always going to happen. So I'm not going to, you know, uh, run myself into a tizzy over the fact that it's some people that didn't like it. So that's kind of the way I sort of see this sort of stuff. <laughs> So on this, um, on this, um, uh, this, this, this stuff for Contra, I actually did a lot of the drawing in a program called Clip Studio Paint. I think it's called Clip Studio or Clip Studio Paint or I don't know what it's called. Look, it's called Clip Studio, and it was probably the. Oh, I'm good. I'm glad you liked it. I did a lot of the artwork in Clips, uh, uh, Clip Studio Paint. And uh, it was probably the only program that can really handle the sizes, uh, the sizes that we were kind of working in. So we're kind of working in oversized, and uh, Photoshop could is as as great as Photoshop is. It is really not that great of a drawing program, and even for portions of. Contra, uh, Contra's um, motion comics. I did draw some of it in Photoshop while I was in house, and it's just a slow process. So we, so most of the time, I just decided I was going to use uh, Clip Studio Paint for drawing line art and then doing any sort of color work that needed to be done in Photoshop.
Serky says, you also don't program, design, or uh, produce produce it. So uh, there is no ownership on the le on that level. I I like the stuff you did uh, for it from what I've seen. Thanks a lot, man. I mean, we, we we tried to do our best on it, and that's that's all you can really ask for, man. And yeah, definitely, I'm not I'm not the I'm not the game designer. I'm not the director. I'm just the guy who makes who who did the cinematics for the game, you know. And uh, and I'm happy with the work that our team produced, and that's that's my thing. And then the biggest thing about this was just like I not only got to work on a kind of a new a new contra game, but at the same time. I got to work with a bunch of people that I work, haven't worked with in over 10 years. Like, so the company that um, that uh, that I was working at, or which is now called uh, Four Kids, um, uh, uh, excuse me, not called Four Kids, it's called Konami Cross Media, they used to be uh, Four Kids Productions, which used to produce the Ninja Turtles cartoon that I used to work on like 10 years ago. So, um, yeah, so it was, it was uh, like a lot of the same people that worked, I worked on when Turtles worked there, like our, 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 um, motion comic director, directors both worked on the Turtles, like Jason Navias was my, was the storyboard guy on Ninja Turtles, he was also my art director on, um, the chaotic card game that, uh, that, you know, that we did, um, our, uh, Let's see, our, our editor, our director, on, and slash... Well, here's the thing. Jason and Ryan Kelly both did the, uh, both directed these motion comics as well as did the animation for it. Hey, what's up, Solitary Zombie? They, they, we, we had a very, very tiny team working on these little motion comics. Uh, and a lot of it, I feel like, also sort of figuring out the process a little bit, too. So yeah, our directors also animated the everything and edited everything. So it was uh, our one of our directors, Jason, he didn't know anything about uh, After Effects or Premiere. And he literally taught himself on the job to kind of be able to help out Ryan to animate these things. So it was a very, it was a very sort of like couple of guys, like a few guys just doing this. And then obviously our, our our uh, color slash paint or color artist slash painter uh, Tony Washington, that guy is a beast. He literally painted every single, uh, every single sh digitally painted every single shot in the game. Like, like meanwhile, like I was, uh, I was able to do a lot of a lot of artwork for the game, but we also had to have other artists come in to do a different di different sections of it because officially, because of the, the way the schedule was, we. It was just not possible for me to draw every little bit of these, which I would have loved to have drawn everything. So, um, but at least in the, the set, at least the, the shorter motion comics are online. I'm, that's all me. But in the the game one, I'm I'm the two sections in the beginning. I'm a, a and then I did a lot of art corrections to kind of bring everything together on on the on the other guys working on there. Is is so yeah. There on on the right on the left there you see Kaiser's crazy 3D uh, arm. I swear the the one thing about like like you know game design then like designing stuff for drawings is just like you'll find that like they just throw so many because you can you can throw pouches and robot arms and all kinds of crazy stuff onto these characters and you only need really need to make it once. But for us, we had to literally draw it over and over again. So I'm drawing that crazy robot hand. As much as possible, I tried to, to get away from not drawing it because... <laughs> That's a little secret on there. I, uh, sometimes I reuse arms and stuff. Yep, I'm rocking it in, in Clip Studio. Yeah, I mean, one one of the things is like I haven't 
gotten to like I've used Clip Studio before, but I, I would have to say that this Contra project allowed me to do it, allowed me to get a lot better at it. I was literally like, not only was I drawing these these comic pages in, uh, these com the comic pa um, shots in in Clip Studio, but I was also um, using Clip Studio to to, uh, to flat so to to color excellence in fact excellence number six was mostly colored in clip studio on a bus by the way i'd literally leave at like 5 a.m in the morning and then I get back at like a, a close to 11, 11 o'clock in the evening. Yeah, there's a couple of Photoshop brushes that I would, I really wish that were, that I could bring over. But eh, I ended up I end up I end up going into Photoshop anyway. Hi there. Some of the uh, some portions of this of these motion comics were drawn in uh, in Photoshop, like I said, and I used some of the Kyle brushes. Some of his drawing brushes uh, for Photoshop are actually really good, but though when you get, though when you get to absurd like an absurd um, resolution that like we're working on, like I'm working on here, I'm actually drawing this image in in 4K. And the reason why I did it in like in like huge like a high resolution like that is just so that I can, again, so that our directors could have a little more freedom as to um, how they wanted to um, what they wanted to do in a moment. Uh, you know, we obviously had our story. Every, uh, everything was storyboarded by by Jason uh, Navias, our, our director, one of our directors. But there was still a fair amount of things that they kind of changed around in the editing process. So what I did for a lot of the, the sections that I drew, um, I tried to overcompensate a little bit just in case they wanted to add some extra motion or they wanted to do any sort of things. Like one of the, the big things is that um, they, they liked camera shake. So what I would do is I essentially draw more artwork on the top and the sides so to compensate for that and then also draw them at a higher resolution so that they can, if they ever wanted to go zoom right up into, into Kaiser's eye or any of the other character's eye, the artwork doesn't turn all pixelated. So yeah, right here you're seeing me kind of adjusting the the artwork a little bit. Uh, I, I th as I remember, I drew everything on a on a separate layer, uh, at least his hand, because I, w I wanted I wanted when he had his hand up into his head, I wanted it to kind of be peeking through a little bit of his uh, one of his fingers. So um, eventually you're going to see me kind of move it all around and see.
I will be right back. This will continue. This will keep magically keep drawing while I'm away. Uh, I'm just gonna go get a, you know, go use the bathroom and everything, and uh, I'll be right back. Yeah, right now um, on this, um, I'm pretty much doing uh, like a clean, uh, more of a cleaned up sketch, just to to kind of get everything bright and on model as much as possible, obviously.
So yeah, feel free to ask any sort of questions you might have. Uh, When I when I did I when I created this playlist I kind of did a search of all kinds of different like uh, maybe some obscure things some the different contra games and and uh, all kinds of other fun stuff. This um, this right here is from the uh, Konami Battle Beat game. It's a it's a cover of a contra song. Sir uh, CK asks, "What are, what are you most excited about with Death Stranding? Gameplay, story, just Kojima being Kojima, and what are uh, you uh, least excited about? Like, uh, has there been anything you uh, seen in the latest uh, trailers where you just like, I don't uh, know about this?" I mean, it's, it's funny, like, I'm mostly, like, it's a, it's an interesting thing, like, with Death Stranding, I'm not, I can't say that I'm incited to play it, more, the more, more of me getting, like, like, liking it and all that stuff is more of just kind of like, because I don't really care for all the actors that are in it, um, I, I feel like, to be honest, when it comes to, when it comes to, um, video games like you know we live in a it's a world where you literally can create your your protagonist from scratch it's like okay yeah we just scan some actors and put them in there i mean granted it's probably makes makes making the game a lot easier if you decide to use all of your buddies to make all the characters right um i'm mostly su mostly support it support it because it's 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 somebody whose work i admire being able to do something that's not within you know something they wanted to do 
it's more it's more of that sort of thing like as far as the gameplay there's some gameplay elements so yeah like it's it's so weird to like see all of that like like it's not weird but it's like it's interesting that you um it's interesting that like it, it's just a kind of a, like it's it's gameplay that you recognize it's not that far from it. It's still a third-person shooter sort of type of environment. And I just think that, like... I, I'm kind of more, more like, I'm wanting to see what... Really more of what we're seeing, wanting to see what it, what the whole game is about. And it's weird. weird. It's kind of like he's, like, anti... Doing the anti-version of what he did with Metal Gear 5, right? So Metal Gear 5, they literally plastered every single moment of the game onto the on, on you know into all the trailers so it's almost like when you're watching the trailers you're kind of doing a doing a checklist oh hey there's the thing or hey there's that that happened there's that that was my biggest issue so but it's like now it's like the opposite of that so uh but you know we'll see what it is we'll see what we'll see what what what, what this is all about uh so uh Mr. K uh, Kony uh, Sony uh, says, "Well, I think your time, uh, uh, your time, and Nakazato uh, son, one do, uh, done, one and done a good job with Rokor." Oh, thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad you like the game, and uh, you know, I think uh, you know. I definitely think that he. He wanted to do something specific, and I think they think a lot of people, at least for a lot of people, uh, the the big the big fun part is actually the, the the big the multiplayer soccer thing that everybody has. At least when I remember from a lot of the streamers that we had on the um, uh, on the thing, they actually really really enjoyed that aspect of the game, and uh, as well as a lot of the co-op elements. And I I think definitely that the co-op elements are, are stuff that like. I think I miss having you know being able to play you know having that ability in a game to just be able to play with your your buddies on the couch as opposed to online and to be able to jump in and jump out I think that's all pretty awesome. Cirky says I really want to play it. Uh, Death Stranding. I am uh, a little uh, concerned about uh, being bored, but I hope he just playing. Uh, close to the chest as far as what uh, possible within the gameplay yeah I know it's a weird sort of thing like it's almost like anti-promotion like it's like oh yeah I'm not gonna tell you how, what are you doing but you know like I think the one thing about gamers is that we kind of do like to know what the the general um, order of business or grind is in the game every single game has it right you know when you talk from you know, what do you do in Metal Gear? The main crooks of Metal Gear is like, well, you sneak around, you're sneaking into bases, you're getting into things. What is what is what is this game trying? What is the the day the day to day grind? Are you just kind of running around, you know, doing a bunch of fresh quests for a bunch of people around the country? <laughs> it, it's it's an interesting idea. I mean, yeah, definitely interested in seeing what where it's going. But it's a it's kind of it's, it's also interesting what he where they were I'm interested in what, seeing where it's gonna go I do think that like at least what in, in uh, talking about that, that in talking about it like uh, I do definitely think that the game is definitely people are there's gonna be some people that are just gonna be purely like oh what the hell is this and then there's gonna be like people oh wow this is great you know it's gonna be I feel like the game is gonna be quite polarizing
the one thing I do notice about uh, about the trailers and Death Stranding, right? Like, like at least some of the stuff they have that weird localization feel to them. Y you know what I mean? Like, it, it definitely feels like a game that is made that, that just so happens to star all these kind of well-known actors, but reading a script that is sort of weird, like it's almost weirdly translated. Because they, they almost talk the way people shouldn't talk. So it's like, it doesn't matter how good the acting is, but it just matters also, it's, it's like, it doesn't matter how good the acting is, when they just have weird things that are coming out of, uh, <laughs> coming out of their mouths all the damn time. One thing I notice that happens with a lot of Japanese content that's been translated is that the, sometimes the conversations don't feel natural. They almost feel like, as opposed to talking to each other, they're sort of talking at each other. I want to say like the biggest culprit of that is like Metal Gear, not Metal Gear, um, um, Zone of Ender's uh, second runner, where it has really, really weird localization inside of it. I mean, it kind of makes it, I think the quirkiness sort of makes it fun and, you know, it was kind of fun. But I also think, like, when you're trying to take something seriously and there's just kind of weird conversations are coming out of these characters, it kind of, I feel like, at least for me, it sort of takes some, me out of it a little bit. Yeah, there's a definitely Japanese has a lot. There's a lot to do it, but I feel like I feel like there are, there are good examples of it. I do feel like um, you know, obviously the first Metal Gear, but um, <laughs> you guys read the article about the the guy who localized that thing and what happened to him. Uh, some uh, <laughs> at least from the way the way the the article is written, the guy seemed seemed. Uh, <laughs> The guy didn't, um, the guy didn't, uh, the, certain people did not appreciate his localization of the, of the script for Metal Gear. <laughs> it's funny, the same guy who did, who localized the script for Metal Gear is also the same guy who created that, who did who did that 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 uh, line? You know, what is a man? A miserable pile of secrets. That's the same guy, which is pretty hilarious. <laughs> they're like, Cirque says they're like uh, Siki says that uh, they're. They're like stage plays about love on the battlefield. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. It, you know, definitely un good on Sony to kind of just support whatever he just decided to, to throw out there. Like, I'm sure he's, he's definitely at the point where he can just say, I want to make anything, and it's you know, and whoever he came to would just say, oh, yeah, sure, we'll do that. But I'm like, man, it takes a lot of faith for them to just be like, all right, we're going with this delivery guy game. <laughs> I mean, like, do like, like. I mean, like, at least from at least from what I remember him saying that they didn't. Um, just Sony's just kind of like just accepting it. Like they're not. He didn't need to do like a bunch of crazy design documents and all kinds of other things. So he's just kind of playing, sort of playing it by ear, off off of a semi script. It's interesting. By the way, 
this uh, song, this this sound, what you're hearing right now is from Contra 4. Um, it's actually really well, really good music for a Game Boy Advance, right? Uh, excuse me, it's a DS game. Sorry. Yeah, like really good, really good sounding samples and stuff in here. One thing I really like about um, Clip Studio is that you allow you to put those sort of put windows into windows on the side so you can have all of your reference kind of sitting right there next to you. Uh, that's part of what I did on here. Well, you can kind of like attach them to each other and you just kind of move them around to certain points. As opposed to having like Photoshop where you just have like another little window sitting here and another one. I'm sure the newer version of Photoshop, I don't have a new version of Photoshop, uh, actually allows that couple of things they um the new photoshop which is funny they actually changed some of the the, the um what do they call them some of the keystrokes and what they do so as opposed to playing control control and alt um an alt to uh to go back in um you have to go back in your history they actually did it a different way Yeah, they do like to change. Adobe does like to change things for no reason. But here's the thing: like when you press um, Control Z, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, Control Z. Um, like for, at least for for Clip Studio, it's um you just go back in history. So it's funny they kind of change it the way everybody else kind of has it. And then when you could press Control Alt Z. That does one 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 undo back. Yeah, I was using that new version of Photoshop also on when I was in house. So it was kind of interesting getting used to all the goofy things that they decided to do it. But like they have like different, um, what do they call them? Like window environments? I don't know what you call them. So like whenever you pull like, like okay, so like if you're working with a 3D object, right? If you pull the 3D object into Photoshop, it'll switch it to like a 3D, a, a mode that feels familiar to people who know 3D, which is interesting. And then there's like an illustrator mode and then there's like another mode where she kind of changes around all the windows. I was like, why are we doing this? <laughs> it was weird. Personally, I wish I wish it would just let me buy uh, buy Photoshop again instead of having to subscribe to it. But everything's subscription now. To me, that was always the status symbol. It's like, oh, you're making enough money, you can go and buy the new version of actually buy the new version of Photoshop. And I don't, I'm, I'm just gonna, I just kind of just use my old version of it. The one that I got. I mean, granted, there's a lot of like a lot of nice new features that I, I think are interesting, but at the same time, it's like it doesn't matter what you're using. You 
anything, I'll probably see if I can buy the new the new, the the CS the CSX. You know, because I know some places still sell that one, and I'll just maybe buy that and just call it a day. Because I'm still running CS5. One of the one of the issues, one of the things that we had on Contra was like, okay, so they had um, they had our um, they had a, a you know a thing that was um, they had uh, the, the subscription to Adobe, and what would happen was because my computer at the job we didn't have any internet, I didn't have any internet on it, so every so often the thing would go haywire because it couldn't call home for like for a few days. Uh, I think it was like, I think it's every 30 days or something it wants to call home. And yeah, so every, every after I finish a month of work or something like that, then it would say, hey, we haven't been connected to the internet for X amount of time. It was just kind of annoying. I was like, I, can I just turn on the program and not have to tell me a bunch of things like that, that I want that I need to do to it one thing great thing about clip studio is you buy the damn thing once and that's it and then you can choose to invest inside of like the other additional features that they put on and they still actively update the damn thing so it's like you'll still get a lot of really great updates on it right They'll fix a bunch of issues and all kinds of other things, you know, add some new things. But they also have the area where you can kind of buy, like, stuff. Like, to, like, the, to, to, you know, like, a better ruler. There's, like, a creator community for Clip Studio where they're making models. In fact, on Contra, on Contra uh, I actually used a, three, a couple of 3D models with, with Clip to just kind of get a quick, a quick underdrawing. Because we had to, like, we just had to kind of get through every single, a bunch of different, um, a bunch of shots. So, sometimes the best way to do it, you just toss down a, you know, pose a, a 3D model real quick, you know, quickly trace it over, and then, you know, uh, refine it, and that's it. This might be a really good soundtrack for Contra 4. Ten folks in here. Welcome, welcome. Right now, uh, I think uh, I think past me is taking a short break. <laughs> How am I drawing with no with, with, with all of my hands here? Oh my god. <laughs> So yeah, I'm just looking at to see what's going on too. Probably just walked away uh, for a little bit and let the left the stream. Oh no, I'm there, drawing.
Yeah, definitely these guys did a really good job on the soundtrack on this one. I remember uh, a lot of people really liked this um, Contra 4. Surprised they did, uh, that Konami didn't toss it on the, um, the Contra collection. But I think that was one of the things that they, the people were kind of um, saying, uh, saying at the time. Like, hey, how come Contra 4 is not on there? It may have to be a, a semi-rights issue uh, when it comes to that game. I, I don't know anything about it, but I, I know that sometimes when games are developed by other studios, they have to get the sort of permission of the other studio or, you know, pay the other studio to reproduce the game. Like, like for instance, like, um, the game The Bouncer is is partially owned by um, Dream Factory, so probably the reason why that game has never obvious well also the game didn't do well but one of the reasons why it probably has never seen like a remake or a remaster or anything is because Dream the probably Dream Factory is just like nah and then Square's like eh whatever you know the game didn't do any well do well at all anyway. So Seeky, would you ever want to work in the game industry ever again? feel like you know what I you know I've kind of bled all that blood dry and I'd much rather just enjoy them from afar as a as a as a fan or as a game player as opposed to being in the thick of it in the industry. says yeah I would like to uh, yeah I think eventually I will just uh, just don't uh, think I'll do UI to the scope that uh, I have in the past UI was pretty much my entire career with some illustration here and there but like I would love to do uh, concept or art uh, direction or something Dude, you have awesome work. I, I would just to tell you this, man. Like, yeah, you know, I love your, I love the, the the Star Wars things you've been doing and all the stuff that you post on Instagram. 
I'd love to see you do just do, 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 you know with that that same sort of aesthetic. What if a game looked in that like that? That'd be awesome. <laughs> and the UI thing. From what I know about UI, I know that like the one thing about it is that like it's a having a person that does good UI is a rare thing, and having a person who likes actually doing uh, UI is even rarer. <laughs> Siki says there is no upward mobility as a UI slash UX artist designer in most studios so you end up having no way of really inf uh, influencing direction of the style uh, any or anything really yeah I mean yeah, yeah. So in other words, you keep, you're saying you can't do a UI that looks like the crazy stuff that you see in um, Persona, right? <laughs> Siki says, I love UI, uh, I love UI, but uh, I also love drawing. 95% of UI is drawing, is design, artistic or gameplay and the 5% is art, which blows, uh, blows from uh, some, uh, for, for someone that wants to draw. Yeah, definitely, man. I'm, I, again, I'm thinking like, wow, this this soundtrack is pretty damn awesome. And I'm like, I'm thinking of that 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 um that scene from Dave Chappelle with um, Arsenio Hall, and he's thinking about what Arsenio Hall is doing at this point. And Arsenio's like, Hall is having is at, is at a wine and cheese party, and then he he goes, he, he takes a bite of the cheese. He goes, How come you didn't tell me the cheese is this good? And he starts beating up the guy next to him. <laughs> that's what that's what I feel like right now. How come you didn't tell me this was that good?
Siki says, luckily most of my UI jobs have been uh, fairly artistic. Like Guild Wars, Second Sun, but uh, the tools slash resources uh, provided were incredibly uh, stifling, which uh, with Ghost of Tsushima, I, I know they're probably already uh, already uh, thrown out most of my uh, ideas because they were unintelligible with uh, un and uh, uh, with what the uh, understandable with what the studio would uh, be willing to uh, provide. I have a title, uh, Mr. K. Uh, Soi, uh, K. Kan, Kanas uh, Sani says, I have a title for graphic designer, but alongside imp uh, improve my design skills, I would like to improve my art and learn to have, uh, learn to use Clip Studio or other programs. I usually use Sci uh, Studio, uh, Sci Studio for digital sketches. I use I use uh, Paint Tool Sci for a uh, um, for a lot of my digital work. The only reason why for Contra I was using it uh, using Clip Studio. Oh, unachievable. Okay. Hold on for a second. I'm having a cheese. But how many times the cheese is this good? <laughs> so. Yeah, I actually use Psy for a lot of my artwork. The only reason why I didn't use it for something like a Contra on the Contra is that Psy, at least the version that I have of Psy, has a memory um, um, issue that once you get over a certain size, the. Um, the um, the program just starts to crash and a act horrible. So we could never handle uh, uh, the the side of the file that I would been that I was doing for Contra. Or you know, so that's part of the reason why I didn't use it. Also, um, paint um, um, Sai is not um, not exactly an industry standard. A lot of you know, obviously a lot of people use it but not everybody not people in this industry even clip studio was kind of pushing it most of it is just photoshop but our art director one of our art directors on um contra was like listen we need to get an actual drawing program for these for our, for you know for us and the you know nothing that's better than photoshop so that's so he was able to convince them to invest in you know what a thing to get to get clip and clip the corporate version of clip and the normal version of clip it's it's really an inexpensive program it's only about 60 bucks Yeah, Paint Tool Size is a good program. Definitely good for, you know, uh, it has a really good painting feature in it. Um, the drawing portion of it's actually really good. But um, if you're looking for, like, a, I would say if you're looking for a semi Photoshop replacement, because Sai can't do everything that, um, that Clip can do in, in Photoshop, I would say if you were just going to go like a kind of not a, in a sort of inexpensive route I would say you could continue to use Psy and then use Clip Studio for any other you know bigger like things that you need to do because um, Psy doesn't have a really good um, hue saturation system 
Like it's not a lot of things are not like they're kind of bare, semi bare bones, but at the same time, the bare bonesness of Psy also makes it a really nice and easy program to run with because they can literally run on every single program uh, 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 on every single operation system. I mean, years ago, I was running that program on like Windows XP, you know, even, 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 it's so it's a, not a um, difficult program to kind of run, so. And even the cost, it's even pretty, it's not that expensive, that program. Both together, you know, with less than the price of um, a Photoshop um, monthly um, subscription, you could literally get two programs that are really good. I think both the, both of them are both sixty bucks. See you around, Mary. Eat well. So, Siki, what do you think of Cory Barlog's streams? <laughs> Not Cory Barlog, um, excuse me, uh, David Jaffe's streams. I, I know, watching them, I get the feeling like he seems like a man that's just kind of just self-destructed. And just... Either that or he was always like that. I don't know. Yeah, he is he is kind of like self-destructive. I don't know what what his his um his goal is. I mean, the guy's worked in the industry for as long as he's had, right? And then it just seems like once he got once he just got away from it all, he just decided to blow it all out the window. I mean, he essentially it almost seems like he's just he blew out every any sort of self any sort of respect that he had with anybody in the industry. It's almost like he, it's, it's such a weird way to go. Like I'm like, like some of the stuff he's saying. I'm like, dude, re wow, what are you saying? I mean, do you want, 
like maybe he's at the fact at the point where he doesn't need to work anymore, right? Maybe he just can do whatever the hell he wants and just, he can do some kind of goofy streams online. But man, that dude. I'm like, I could never do that. Like, just throw caution to the wind and just say F you to everything that's out there. I mean, Twisted Metal 2 or the God of War series, yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah, just me. Maybe he, maybe just working, and it did make his break, make his brain break. Okay, what do we got here? That sounds like credits. possible that the industry did break his mind. So now we're inking. So Clip Studio has this really great feature where um, you essentially just click a button and it'll turn all of your line art uh, uh, into like non-photo blue, making it a lot easier to ink. You can actually choose any single color um, that you want it to change to, but it'll instantly change the color to something that uh, you can easily just do a work over. <laughs> Siki says, uh, honestly, I can't uh, presume to understand uh, Jaffe. He made drawn to death. <laughs> See, that's a situation where it seems like somebody had some faith in him over there at Sony. You know, like, they, they, enough for them to, 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 to throw this kind of like, I don't know, I feel like the game was not, probably a lot more was given to the game because of, because it was a Jaffe game. You know, like people probably expected a lot more from it. Kind of like calling all cars.
Yeah, with Drawn to Death, I never, I never bothered with that one. <laughs> it just didn't look like something I wanted to play. Uh, then again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the audience for that. I, I don't, I'm not into big multiplayer experiences or like battle arena sort of games. I'm a pretty uh, uncompetitive guy when it comes to, to stuff like that. Because for the most part, I suck at competitive games. I'm horrible. Like I like fighting games, and those are those are also those are competitive games. But I'm I can't say that I'm great at them. But I've always enjoyed them. One thing about games that I've, 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 I've got, as I've gotten older, I've kind of yearned for sort of simpler experiences. Like, I like, you know, I'm, I'm, I like obviously the big story type, type of games, but I noticed that when I was working full time, you know, just coming home at crazy hours of the night, I found that I was, I wanted to have more games that, that were just less, too, didn't have a lot of story elements to them. Yeah, the style in Drawn to Death is is probably my my one of the reasons why I didn't want to play it. It just it feels like it's trying to be too hard to be punk. Y you know what I mean?
another cool song. Again, another one of those sorts of uh, from the Konami Battle Beat uh, album. Cool it down for a little bit. <laughs> So another fun, funky, uh, kind of a fun, uh, funky thing that sort of happened while uh, working, doing the work for this game. Well, not during the work for it, it was like just seeing a lot of the sort of reviews and things that came off of it. There was this one guy, I don't know who it is, he's, I think he's the buddy of the Angry Video Game Nerd. And I, every so often I kind of frequent their, their channel. So, um... I think he did a review of the, he did his own kind of, you know, hot take of the game. He played through the game and uh, he was commenting on the artwork. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't even understand the comment he made. He said something like it looked like somebody trying to get uh, an intern. Tr my artwork looked like it was somebody trying to get an internship at Cartoon Network or something like that. I'm like, that doesn't even make any sense. I'm like, I'll take the criticism, but at least try to come up with a, a criticism that means means anything so I was like I'm like listen like listening to this I had to like like run it like three different times because he's it's almost like he was looking for something bad to say you know <laughs> so I just kind of like chuckle at it yeah exactly I, I, I like I, <laughs> I don't even understand what the comment was supposed to be hey I get it the guy didn't like the like the game but at the same time, it's like, if you're going to criticize something, at least come up with a better criticism or get your buddy the angry video game nerd to write you better content. <laughs> funny, the kicker, the pretty funny thing about it is I actually did see that guy um, maybe a week or two before the release of the game. Um... Because I was helping my buddy, um, we went to a local like uh, toy convention. Because he was, uh, he has a lot of like toys and stuff. So he decided, hey, you know, I'm gonna sell off a bunch of the stuff. So I was helping him, you know, keep the table good and helping him sell off, you know, some of his old toys and stuff at this toy convention. And that uh, that guy and Anger Video Gamer and all those his guys are actually all local to Pennsylvania. So I saw all of his. His, his cronies walking around. So that guy actually stopped by my table. Stop, not, not by my table, but stopped by our table. And a friend of his was buying one of the um, one of the things my friend had uh, for sale, which is kind of funny. So, uh... Sir uh, Siki says, someone said uh, his work, my work uh, stuff uh, on Second Son looked like it was made in MS Paint, and that always makes me smile. <laughs> Jeez. I think I think uh, I think when it comes to angry video game nerd and a lot of those um, uh, internet personalities like YouTuber guys, they're all looking for the hot take, right? They're all looking to to you know you know to get people all riled up and all stupid. So I know I know what he was doing. It's it's partly obviously his own opinion about the about the game or whatever, but it's also turned up because he's on TV or on YouTube. So 
I, I know how all that stuff works. So something, so something that could be mildly bad is incredibly horrible. You know, just because, because saying something is because because something saying because the hot takes are the things that get get you views. Tiki says, it's just like if you have a critique, I'm always open he uh, to hear hear it, but I do uh, did all the work on the game in four months, and it looks all right. And saying something outrageous is just more amusing, uh, amusing that... Uh, Just uh, more um, uh, amusing that uh, hurtful. Uh, outrageous if it just yeah, dude. I you know, dude. I I know. <laughs> but I mean, he's like you know the one like the one thing about like I think the one thing about sitting in front of somebody, you know, like and then uh, uh, amusing then hurtful. Yeah, definitely. But I mean, the thing is, that, like, they don't. Nobody knows how much you had to go through to get to that point. You know, they everybody just kind of is commenting on the final product. They didn't know how many, uh, how many, how many hours, uh, you know, how many sleepless nights or uh, how much crunch or whatever you did to get to that point. You know. And to be honest, it's like you know, reacting to reacting to something, um, something when it's totally disconnected from the people that it that it's from. I often find that people are more more heavy-handed when they don't think that they're talking about other people. You know, when they when they don't think that the other per the other people are actually listening. How much do you want to bet? That if that if that person was standing right in front of you, or that that, that dude from Angry Radio Game Nerd was standing in front of me, right? He would totally walk back every single thing that he had to say, at least some part portion of the things that he had to say about about the work that was in it. Because, again, it's like they're 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 just talking about a, right? Exactly. They would, he would probably be like, hey, you know, I wasn't too too keen on what the, the artwork that was done on this. You know, maybe this thing could have been improved. I'm like, yeah, I can, I can go with, I can go with that. You know, but that's why whenever I do, like, whenever I, this is going to like reviews of people um, at conventions and stuff. Like, you know, me and Kari get folks that come up and they want to get their their work reviewed. I I I try to be. Um, uh, I try to be light-handed about it, you know, where I'm not, because I've seen artists out there that have literally just bashed somebody to bits right in front of them, and I feel like to be honest, like, I don't want, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna critique somebody, I don't want them to stop drawing, I don't want them to stop creating so what can I do to help them get to the to, to keep pushing themselves you know, and that's that's my my belief on it. I, I, you don't get anything from bashing people into the ground. To me, honest, people only do that sort of stuff that they 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 want they want to put somebody in their place or they have some sort of problem. You know. I feel like 90%, I say like most, 
like maybe 90% of the people on the internet could never say the, the, the horrible things that they say. Say the horrible things that they say online to an actual to an actual person's face because they have that end that uh hey thanks a lot glad you like the track this track is from uh let's see let's see what this one this one's actually from contra Re uh, evolution Later, solitary zombie. Uh, Siki says, I love critiques, but there, there's a difference between being mean and being constructive. And frankly, there is nothing anyone can say that I'm not already thinking. I'm trash. Yeah, I know I... <laughs> I, I, yeah, I know my guy. <laughs> you are not trash. Oh, uh, yeah, well, it's, um, it's actually from Contra Revolution, um, I can't. Uh, I know. I can't remember much about that game, but they did a lot of. Um, uh, they did a lot of uh, remixes and things, and they had cu a couple of game, different gameplay aspects, semi -re retelling, redoing certain parts of the game. So definitely an interesting title. Ryukin says, uh, I understand that some people expected different th uh, things from a, uh, from New Contra, but some of the reactions to the game are unreasonably uh, harsh and uh, dismissive. Um, you know, the the I think the one thing about it is it's 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 a definitely a hard room to. Um, to do something new in something that's already been established, and uh, I definitely think that it's it can it you can when you start trying to re, sort of re go into those different ideas, and I think a lot of people get when they don't look it doesn't look exactly like their nostalgia, and nostalgia is a big factor in all of it. A lot of times you get those sorts of situations where you have people that are they're just gonna they're gonna be heavy-handed with everything. It's just the way it is. So, you know, I mean, our game director genuinely, our game director genuinely wanted to make, make something, uh, make something, make something that would, some, something that was in interesting and fun to play. And he wanted to do something a little bit different rather than just kind of rehash the same sort of games over again. And I respect him for that. So, I mean, to be honest, it's like, yeah, there could be the, there's always the easy answer where you just kind of remake the same game over and over again, or you kind of try to reinvent it. And maybe it's, maybe it's the reason why, you know, I don't know exactly why, but maybe it's the reason why, you know, Rogue Core is not a numbered Contra game, you know? Maybe they was trying to kind of create a sort of uh, offshoot of the same sort of franchise into a different di different direction. I don't know. Most of the stuff we don't, you know, being that we're kind of separated, you know, by, you know, him being, you know, Nakazato-san and the and the game team being on the other side of the world, we don't get to hear a lot of the the crooks of of the ideas of what where he was thinking or where he was going to go with it. I mean, less on the motion comic team, we're just sort of. We're just adapting his ideas into the sort of into the comic, you know. Siki says, "I'm just saying, artists are already thinking they are the worst, uh, thinking the worst thoughts about their own work. So, like, 
crapping on someone just to crap on them isn't helpful, but perspective is uh, valuable if the critic can do it in a way that gives the artist something to think about for the future work or future work. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm, yeah, definitely. I definitely think that. Sorry about that, guys. I was just having a, a, a personal conversation with my girlfriend. She's actually, you, you, you can kind of see her in the back there, you know, working on stuff. <laughs> So, uh, let's see, let's get back to this. Um, Ryukin says, um, I actually thought Rogue Corps was a sequel to Neo Contra because of the similar camera uh, top-down perspective. Um, love Neo Contra has one of the most uh, badass intro cinematics in uh, gaming <laughs> too. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I, I'm not, you know, I don't know exactly what um, Nakazato-san was actually sort of going for. Uh, I just was like, but I, but I knew one, but I knew one thing about it. It was like, and the reason why I took it, it was just like, took the job. I really, you know, it's it's not every day that you get to work on something that is kind of an I iconic franchise like Contra, even if it is so different as the way it is right now. You know, like where it has like different looking characters and and a couple of, of, of you know kind of a different gameplay. But I I definitely think that was the one thing that attracted me to the project. It was like, hey, when is the, they're asking me if I would be cool if it would be down to do to potentially do a new Contra uh, artwork for a new Contra game. That's awesome. No matter how you cut it, you know? So that's like, so like when I, when we first, when I first saw the stuff for it, I was like, all right, I'm down. Let's do this. This is, this is going to be a, this is going to be a cool gig. And that's kind of the way I saw it. 
Oops. Hold on, guys. Let me run that back. This is Contra Uprising. A hardcore, uh, excuse me, sorry, not Contra Uprising. Hard Corpse Uprising. The uh, Arc System Works uh, Contra work, a uh, Contra-esque game, as, they, uh, as we'd like to say. Officially, the officially it is a, it is a contra. Um, what do they call it? Not a successor. Is this has the spirit of contra, uh, though it's being produced by um, Konami, and there are a lot of names and characters and that are very similar to the contra franchise. In fact, while you hear the soundtrack, there's going to be some very familiar contra songs. Uh, I mean, officially, this game is not considered part of the canon of Contra, which is, which is from the horse's mouth himself, from the Nakazato-san, and uh, and some of my my friends, uh, you know, some of my coworkers, uh, friends and coworkers at the Konami, where that's like, yeah, this is, it's not officially part of it, but it kind, it is. <laughs> I do have to commend, though. You know, I do really like the, uh, the 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 music in this game. See, you just heard the the iconic Contra song right there. Seeky says, "Definitely, man. I would uh, work on any franchise. I'd love, even if I could see the." see the future and know uh, certainly that it wasn't going to be uh, be popular like if I could have worked on uh, Star Wars prequels I would have I'd uh, work on uh, on any Contra game there's no uh, game uh, played more on an NES than Contra except for Mario 3 I mean that's that's Part of that was part of the right reason why I took it when, when, when why I went went for it. I was like, when is the next time I'm going to be able to draw something contra related? You know. When is when when I when I would I ever be able to do anything like that? Probably never. And to be honest, the great the the really awesome thing about it was I like like you know a month or two after we we finished actually doing the um artwork for the for the for the in for the actual game they literally we they, they, you know they literally co you know came up and they were like yep we're going to be working on some new things we're going to doing doing some th three um mini comics which you know connect the the two the you know the older games to the newer games and you're going to get to draw bill and lance i'm like that's, that's awesome because to be honest i was like i was perfectly fine with just like not you know, I'm like, okay, this is Contra now. It's these guys with the with the drills and the, and the, the samurai swords and all that stuff. I'm like, all right, that's cool. These guys are fun. But then when they said, it was like, then later, I'm like, I didn't expect uh, to be ever drawing Bill and Lance or be drawing a lot of those cool, iconic Contra-esque moments. Hell, if they asked me to do a Metal Gear game, I would do it. Doesn't matter. I mean, when, again, when is the next time I'll be able to do something like that? Uh, Reiki. Reiki Ken S says there was a Konami code during loading screen of the first level uh, to make the game uh, play actual uh, play actual Contra theme remixed. Uprising Hard Corps. In Uprising Hard Corps. You know, it's funny, like, I've actually never played this game. I've only played little bits of it. I've, I've been, I'm not, I've been meaning to pick it up on PS3 or something. Because so I think I'd, uh, I think I'd, uh, I would, uh, and uh, I think it, you know, would be a nice breath of fresh air from all the kind of heavy duty, like, 
50,000 hour sorts of games that come out nowadays. Have you ever guys realized, like, like felt like, like, I don't know, I, this is a weird sort of, compl not a complaint, but it's like a weird sort of thing. It's like, you ever notice how like games are just so damn long now? Like, I remember being able to, like, in a week, or, you know, being able to finish off of like a, you know, one of those 10 hour or six hour games. Like, yeah. But now everything's like 50,000 hours it's long. Like, Red Dead Redemption gives me freaking anxiety. The second one? Because there's just so much to do in the game. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. Granted, I am very... I'm, I'm amazed at the amount of work that they did put into that game. But my god, that's so many... That's so many hours. And to be honest, I can't... It's hard to devote, especially as, as my, my work schedule's kind of change around and working freelance I can't do that sort of stuff even just playing bloodstained ritual of the night you know during the evenings kind of kind of cuts into to time that I could be using to work Mr. K K uh, Kona so Sony says, I usually don't listen to what the journalists uh, have to say about games. I prefer to play uh, it for myself and hopefully like it. It's funny, um, like, there's only a, for me, there's only a certain batch of the game uh, journalists in general that I kind of sort of specifically go out of my way to read. Uh, this is nothing on any of the game journalists that are in the industry, but I, I just don't, I just don't kind of, uh, I just kind of, I'm a little bit like that where I like to kind of make my own decision, but I also like to hear other people's opinions on it, especially if it's some journalist that I trust, you know, that I, that I know that they're, the things that they like co sort of correlate with the things that I sort of like. It's kind of like having a, I don't know, like, I, I think of it like the old days where you used to pick up video game magazines, right, and you had a favorite game game writer, like, hey, I, I really like the way Sushi X does things, right, you know, if you're back in the EGM days. So I just kind of, I kind of just think of that way. I kind of have ones that I kind of go to guys that I kind of always read, and uh, and usually, for most part, they tend to tend, tend to kind of fall in the same line as I, same sort of line of thought when it comes to certain game choices I do. But I've kind of, in a lot of ways, it's weird. Like, I've kind of already, when it comes to games, I've sort of made my choice initially when it, when I first see the game as to whether I would like or not like it. Like, and then all the games that, I, that I've been always on the fence about, they've always been games that I've never liked. Um, so like, Castlevania Lords of Shadow is probably my least favorite game. Uh, and I bought that game because I had a mild interest in it. And I really should have just listened to my gut on it and say like, hey, you know, you don't really want it that bad. So yeah, I ended up not, I finished Castlevania Lords of Shadow, but I ended up not really liking it at all. It felt like um, one of the one of the worst things that you could ever happen, that can happen to you during a game is something becomes a chore. And when something starts to become a chore that you have to constantly do and upkeep over it, I feel like at that point, that's when I, I start to to pull away, you know, or like I'm starting to get get a little bit bored of it. A lot of people like Castlevania: Lords of Shadow and like the sequel, but uh, I'm not a big fan of those games. Siki says, "Every uh, everyone uh, every, oh, every excuse me every open world game is designed to keep you playing for at least 50 hours." I've uh, been meet in a meeting. Uh, I've been in a meeting 
meetings where the studio heads are pointing at uh, graphs saying, this is what uh, gamers expect now. It's hot garbage. <laughs> See, that's some, ins that's some inside stuff right there, man. But I mean, to be honest, it makes perfect sense to me. I mean, a lot of a lot of industries is, is controlled by a, a big graphs and stuff like that. People thinking that they know what they what people want and stuff like that. I. Oh, see, there we go. Um, I personally, you know, I, I can't. I, I don't know why. I, I I'm I don't know why, people, you know, some, they're so against having smaller experiences too. Or having those one of those six hours experiences, I sort of miss them. In fact, like um, like after playing Kingdom Hearts for fifty billion hours, right? And I got the platinum trophy in that one. I literally had to go for a palate cleanser. So you know what I you know what I did? I played friggin' um, double switch. I played Double Switch, which is essentially a re-release of that game from the from the Sega CD. Mr. Kona, uh, Kona so uh, Sona says, "I think uh, some people, uh, some people is rather uh, cruel, uh, unfair, and with games." That just uh, th that they just don't they don't like. Thus, this I rather uh, don't listen t to them. I don't uh, want to be uh, rude, but I want to b uh, believe uh, the believe it is a better uh, that way. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I guess yeah. This is the one of the Konami code tracks, right? You know one thing, like you know, speaking of the guys who um, Arc System work guys, right? The guy who created um, Guilty Gear, right? Not only does not only designs the game, he actually animates a bunch of the characters. You know, actually designs the characters, animates some of them, and also does the music. I swear that that's crazy. Yeah, I definitely think that a lot, when it comes to sort of reviews, it's it's more about it's a lot about those sort of hot takes. Um, I think a lot of, and you know, I might be wrong about this, but it seems like a lot of the the, the websites out there are kind of looking for, um, you know, kind of clickbait, you know, kind of to kind of goat people into into um, you know, you know, having these sorts of uh, like um, these titles that sort of get people to click on their on their on their articles I, I feel like the sort of sense of community that happens with that used to happen with a lot of sites has kind of gone out the window for just getting people pissed off so they click on a so they click on something you know like I don't mean like again I like I miss I kind of miss the video the video game magazine days because they always you always felt like you were part of something, you know? Even though you were just a person buying it, 
there was always that sort of like, okay, you're a part, you're you're a part of the, a part of a community of some sort, you know. Even though you're just a person who just reads every month, you know, a lot of the a lot of the old magazines used to get original artwork done for them, and a lot of them used to put out all kinds of little fun little things that were just specifically for them, you know, and the people that liked their magazines. You know, I kind of miss that sort of stuff where, like, you know, why can't a website be something like that? You know, where they sort of, not they're not only giving you the, you know, essentially giving you the news that's going on in, in gaming, but also kind of, um, but also kind of, uh, you know, create a little bit of community around it, you know? Yeah, I haven't I haven't actually played um I haven't played Uprising yet. It's one of those things that I kind of like semi passed by, but I do have it I do have one I still do have my PlayStation 3 hooked up, so maybe I'll like maybe maybe if I uh, after blood if I'm done with Bloodstain, I'll toss that one in. I would prefer it to be like a physical copy, but that wasn't one of those titles. Or was it? I don't remember. The one thing about the the one thing I always liked the Nintendo Power magazine uh, back when it was uh, around. The one thing about it that I always that I always used to question about it was like how okay how can a, the Nintendo Mag Power magazine give something a bad rating? They can't. They actually couldn't give anything a bad rating, right? Because everything they, they were they were essentially Nintendo's magazine. But I did like one thing I did like about again, like going back to what I was saying, they at least with Nintendo Power, they were kind of sort of creating a, a semi community. They had original artwork that were created. They had little comics. They had characters that were only specific to their to their thing, to their um, to their magazine, like Nestor and you know all those characters. They had commissioned comics, like comics to be made for it like the Zelda comic that would appear inside of it like really cool like things to kind of like I'd love to see a video game website do that the idea of the idea of um making content that um original content that keeps people coming back other than just a bunch of articles you know I used to, for me, when I was younger, I used to pick up um, Nintendo Power, but then eventually I kind of let that one lapse, and then I would just pick up video magazine, video game magazines at the at the one of the local like bodegas or um, uh, you know just like a bookstore or something. And the ones that I used to love after Nintendo Power was uh, the original PSM. Which went back in those days, they used to get comic book artists to do um, covers for them, which is awesome. Like they had like Joe Mad did a bunch of covers for them, and um, Arthur Adams. They had all, all pretty much all the hot like comic book 
artists doing cover like video game covers, like of ca- covers of video game characters. Then there was uh, video games. I used to like that one. Um, game fan was also another one that I really liked. Uh, EGM and EGM two. It's so great that you had to have a sequel. Uh, and and then I would occasionally pick up games players. I didn't like Game Pro though. And it's mostly an art reason. I didn't like the artist that was drawing the covers. They used to draw the unique covers for that magazine. They're just I just didn't like them. <laughs> Who is my favorite Contra Rogue Corp member to draw? Um probably Hungry Beast because he's a giant panda. <laughs> just just that He's just, I just, I've always, I said this from the beginning, he's just so out there. It's like, hey, let's put a panda in there. All right. He's the fun, he's the funnest one. And he's also the one that you don't need to be too, you can be a little bit off. Like, if you ever look at the way I drew, drew Hungry Beast, he doesn't exactly look like a panda. I kind of drew him like a, as big as a, what do they call it? Not a panda, what is it? Like, he's, he's almost like a grizzly panda, at least the way I drew him. Because <laughs> pandas are a lot smaller, so I kind of drew him like big and hulking, and that was the fun part of him drawing him. His hand was a hard to, insanely hand, hard, hard to draw though. He's got this big robotic arm, and um, like he has this giant um, thing. But he's probably the one that you didn't, you could eat, draw a little bit off model, and it would still look okay. Um, Kaiser. He has a lot of tech and stuff on him. Like his whole shoulder and his arm and all that stuff. And just his the way his hair is. I try to get at that. Hari Curry, I don't I I feel like I didn't draw her as much as I would have liked to. But then she also has cybernetic elements on her too. She's got that robotic leg and um she has that um alien in her alien parasite in her belly. But yeah, I feel like I didn't draw her as much as I would have liked. Uh, and then I drew a lot of Gentleman. Gentleman is also pretty difficult to draw too. But again, he's one of those characters that if you draw him a little bit off, it's okay. Because he kind of is kind of amorphous and kind of a bug, like a bug monster. And bug monsters are always fun to draw. So a couple of, couple of fun fun things. So in I, on my Twitter, I, I mentioned that um, there are Easter eggs in, uh, like, there, uh, there are Contra Easter eggs in Contra Rogue Core from other Contra games, from, con, from the previous Contra games. And there's also a bunch of, like, Konami ones in there that I kind of worked in. And there's at least more than one Metal Gear one in there. Um... There is a, there's a little tribute to Pro Protector. If you look around, I, I worked in a couple of Pro Protectors for our friends out in uh, in Europe. Uh, there is uh, there is uh, the VTOL or the the ship that um that uh, Lily drives on there is kind of a big fun Konami Easter egg on on the side of it. Uh, there is, I mean, for, for me, I, the way I saw Lily was more of a, um, kind of like a, kind of an otaku. And I, I thought at least had the idea as like, I wanted her to have a lot of kind of like fun, kind of otaku-ish things kind of hanging around her. <laughs> yeah, you, they have the cameo of Nakazato-san. Yes, I worked him into the, um, into the online motion comics. Ah. Uh, in our in the video game in the actual game motion comic, there's a cameo of our of our uh, of our one of our directors in the chop shop sequence. There's a head that goes flying past. Um, if you slow it down, that's our um, that's our, our our motion comic director. Um, another one, a, a good a good friend a friend of ours from the job uh, from Konami Cross Media is a guy named Jason Lamb. He's a really cool dude. 
is just a lot really great stuff and i worked him into the into the chop shop as one of the as the as the guy that um they try to save and then gets covered in acid <laughs> um him he the, he's actually wearing a, a metal gear reference if you look at his jacket he's wearing the big boss jacket from metal gear 5 um Hungry Beast at one point is ripping apart one of the cyborgs, and um, the cyborg, all the the, if you notice that there's like these kind of like, like spinal things inside of it, that's actually um, a Metal Gear Rising Revengeance um, reference. So whenever you know Raiden would cut open something, he had the thing called um, what was it called, Zendetsu or something like that, whatever he chopped somebody and he'd take their spine out and then crush it in his hand. The one that the one that Hungry Beast is ripping apart is literally those. That's what those those things are. But they, but we colored them differently. But yeah, it was supposed to be that. All the cyborgs in the thing are just uh, the, in the chop shop are kind of like randomized though. They're all kind of um, they're not really anything specific though. They do some of them do have familiar feels to some con some uh, Konami things. Like I took some inspiration from some of the other like things with cyborgs. So there's one that might look a little, little like a snatcher in there, and then there's one that might look like a, a little like Raiden, have like look like he came from a Raiden like a, a Metal Gear Revi Rising Revengeance world. Because there was no there was no notes on the, how they wanted the cyborgs in the chop shop to look, so I just kind of went crazy and drew a bunch of different looking monsters. And robots. But for Lily, but for Lily, I I wanted her to be sort of like an otaku, and I wanted um, at least to decorate the VTOL with a lot of sort of obscure Konami franchises, like anime things and stuff. So in one shot, I there's a shot that I posted. Which was a uh, Lily and like driving the VTOL or driving the, the, the guillotine, and um, there's like a, a bunch of charms that are hanging off of it, and one of them was like a love plus one, and then one of them was the was a uh, Fang from the from Contra Hardcore, but uh, we uh, we um, but we they just eventually removed them, but I was like my idea was like if we're gonna be doing if we're gonna put work little references for people, we should also not we should also not be afraid of doing references that only Japan would know or references that only Europe would know. To kind of be like, because we're all sort of at least you know people all playing it, we're all seeing it. There's no real separation as to as far as like localization and things. When a game comes out, most of the time when a game comes out in you know a big franchise game like Contra comes out in. Japan or in the United States or in Europe it comes out and it comes out for everybody right so my idea was like okay let's work in things that only Japan would know and things that only Europe would know you know I wanted to get a mystical ninja reference in there too uh, but I, I just could you know it also it also depends on time and it also depends on um, a lot of times when you do these sorts of things, you also have to kind of get them approved by um, by the parent company, by Konami. So anytime any of these things they had to, to, to they showed up, I like, throw them in. They're like, they'd be like, hey, what is this? Is this anything that we? I'm like, well, it's this. And they're like, oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. But they kind of gave us free, as far as the motion comics, they kind of gave us free reign to toss in as many little Konami references as we could, if we can get them in. In the um, in the on in the online motion comics, there's actually one. Um, there's a there's a snatcher reference as soon as that one starts up. When you see the Times Square looking area, it yeah, it's in that shot.
<laughs> I want to be like, man, this sounds like Guilty Gear. Oh wait, it is Guilty Gear. Well, at least made by the guys who did the music for Guilty Gear. Yeah, I mean, like, Konami has so many, like, you look at it, like, Konami has so many franchises. Like, so many things that people know and grew up with. So it's like, why, I mean, at least my, the whole crux of, the reason why I wanted to thro throw as many of them in there is because it, it makes me think back to, like, if you ever played, like, some of the older games, right? Snatcher, right? And stuff like that, where they used to literally just totally drop little references to their own stuff within it. I mean, obviously not to kind of disturb the whole, they don't disturb the whole, you know, the, the whole narrative of the game. But, I mean, in Outer Heaven, in the friggin' in Snatcher, right? The, the bar, which is a very important bar in the game, you literally go in there, and who's sitting in there? It's Dracula, it's, uh, Simon Belmont, it's Bill and Lance, it's Rocket Knight, you know, and I'm like, you know, I mean, obviously I'm not going to do something on the nose like that, like throw, literally throw Simon Belmont in the background, but maybe a little fun little nod to that sort of stuff for folks that are looking, because as a fan myself, I'm always looking for that sort of stuff too, you know? It's something I used to, even when I worked on like Ninja Turtles, like when I worked on the Ninja Turtles cartoon, it's something I used to do. Just like throw little references to Ninja Turtles itself inside of it, you know? Because I definitely think that like a lot of fans are always there. Not every. Some are just playing it, and some are just like you just find those fun little things. And if you get it, it's like, oh, and it's like it's like a fun little nod. That's how I really saw it. Oh, what what are you doing? What are you up to, cats? So past me looks like it were, it's, he's getting pretty close to finishing, probably a um, little bit more on it, and then I think he's done. I think past me is going to be done with the line art. The way you know, you, the way you'll know uh, that I'm that I'm done is that I'll write like you know, you know, time for color or something like that, or something I write at the end. I actually recorded another session of um, 
of me drawing stuff for Contra. This was actually for a geek.com article. Uh, so that's why I was able to post it. Officially, um, I also recorded myself recording, um, drawing actual artwork for the motion comic. Um, but unfortunately, not unfortunately, but that, that stuff is more sensitive and it all really depends on Konami on to whether they want to release it or not. But yeah, there is, it is out there. And uh, I have seen a, a version of the video that they did, they did put together of it. So hopefully, I mean, I would love to see them put it out. It's literally me drawing that the 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 big the cool shot of, of, of Kaiser with his gun, um, you know, like running at the screen at the camera, and then uh, the other one is uh, of Lily. I wish I got to do um, to to record more of it, but when, once once production got really really harsh or heavy, uh, it was a little more difficult for me to do it. But I did make sure I did it at least on tried to do it on two of the more well known, uh, to the, the 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 some of the some of the main characters. Ryuki Ken, Ken uh, S says, "Sorry if uh, if dumb question, but were Contra Rogue Corps characters designed by you from ground up, or was uh, was internally developed by at Konami, and then you uh, polished them to their final state, like?" we uh, see we like we know them now so uh, the initial the character design for uh for all the characters of contra rokar were all designed by uh you know konami and um, nakazato's team in japan and the work that, that that i did in the motion comics is literally an adaption of those designs for the motion comic that's pretty much it um uh, yeah, I officially, like, n like, there are c characters that have been designed by me for the game, for, not for the game, but for the comic that have not, that do not appear in the actual game. So, like, characters like Lily, uh, and a lot of the incidental, like, cyborgs that they kill off in one portion, or, um, Dr., um, I think Dr. Phoenix, and the two doctor, the two doctors that appear later on. Those are designed by me, me and me and the team. So, um, yeah. Officially, we didn't. We, we when when I got on, 
Kaiser and all the characters from Contra Roker were already designed. It was just about us kind of adapting those designs for the comic. That's why I was like, I brought, to be honest, I, if I were to, des were to design them, I probably wouldn't have made them so detailed because I would have known that like, oh wow, I don't want to keep drawing a bunch of cybernetic arms and, and, and pouches and things. But that's, that's a different, games are a different, designing for games and designing for comics or like, and designing for animation are kind of different animals. You can be, you can afford to be extravagant in a video game. You can throw every single bit of thing on a character, right? One of the big, one of the things about video games is that like, it's really about the silhouette of the character that matters. So, it doesn't matter what's inside of it. It's what how well they read against everything else. And it's the same with with um, with other with other um, design, right? But at the same time, you um, especially if somebody's drawing it, you probably wouldn't go that nuts. Like I wouldn't have put like I wouldn't have put as many many things on them my my way of designing is at least especially for kind of weird like unique characters they usually have maybe one s sort of gimmick about them and then i kind of just work off of that oh, it's a good question though i don't don't think that they, that was a, a a silly question i mean i, I it's especially with this project the who did what sort of thing is a little bit muddled because there's so many people, there's so many parts to it. Like I cannot, I you know I can't, I can't claim credit for the whole motion comic because it was me, and it was and it was a, 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 a few other guys, a, a few other guys, you know. So at least when I was trying to do promotion, I was trying to let people know, like no, 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 I'm not the only guy on this thing. <laughs> Granted, mine was the work that was that was that set everything off, and that's the thing that they approved. But just the way time constraints went, we ended up having to have more people on board to do it. By the way, motion comics are hard, <laughs> harder than comics, um, because you got to worry about a lot more uh, in a motion comic than you do in an actual comic because most people think okay a motion comic you just take a comic and then you just animate it no 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 it doesn't work that way there's a lot more stuff that has to go into it there needs to be boarded it needs to be you know sound design edited all the things that you would have for a normal uh, a normal film project just with limited animation that's what com motion comics are really just limited animation and you still need to comp compensate for a lot of different things for the for the animation so like Kaiser, whenever Kaiser needed to move his arms, that meant I needed to draw the, 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 you know, draw the other side of his face underneath the arm. I needed to draw enough of the arm below the actual visual space, visual aspect ratio, so that we could have it rise up and you see more arm on him. Um, if anybody had to move their arm up or down, I had to essentially construct the character so that their arm, their shoulders, or their the biceps and stuff like that would essentially cover over the space within the artwork. So it, it was, it's like, so semi, it's not only like drawing, it's also a semi engineering project. Figuring out ways to get these things to look, still look like one cohesive drawing while having joints and stuff that they can move around. Um, uh, Ryu Kiken S. Uh, I keep screwing up your name. Sorry about that. Um, oh, I wanted to 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 ask if you could uh, say anything about any uh, much different earlier versions of them. But I guess uh, only Konami team uh, seems them during early development there is one early development thing that i probably cannot say anything about uh so i'm probably gonna you know omit that thing 
But uh, yeah, like officially, as far as the early designs have, they're pretty much like at least when we got on the project, they, everything everything was we already had concept designs for every single character, every single monster and environment that appear in the game. The only difference is like the artwork. Kaiser had changed a bit since the initial design, um, since the artwork. Harry Curry went through a lot of design changes, even while we were drawing the motion comic. Um, she got, uh, you know, her face was, a, uh, when we originally started, her face was a little bit longer, but then they kind of revised her and they gave her a little bit of a tan. So we had to actually change the artwork in the motion comic to fit that. So, but other than that, um, gentlemen, pretty much from I don't remember seeing any uh, early versions of him, but beyond the ones that I saw. Oh well, for gentlemen, there were some. He used to have um, like funky tattoos all over him. Not tattoos, but like little, like I don't know, decals or tattoos or whatever he had on him. And one of them was removed because it was essentially a. <laughs> Essentially, it was a copyright infringement, so they couldn't have it. But before, um, before, but this is before it even got put out. Um, gentleman used to have um, a live long and prosper um, thing on his belly. <laughs> underneath the underneath the straps, he would have he had it there, and that that's one of the things that got removed. And it actually did say live long and prosper on it. But yeah, I think that's one of the ones that got removed. And uh, there's a couple, maybe other things, but yeah. Uh, looks like I know what soundtrack I'm gonna go buy. Jeez, this is pretty awesome. Yeah, it looks like I'm getting close here. So yeah, if you notice in the image, um, now I'm, I'm adjusting the uh, adjusting a couple of things around. Yeah, but under normal circumstances, if this was something that was going to be for the actual motion comic, I would have probably drawn more of his shoulder and more of his chest down further so that we could, so again, so they could do like a maybe camera shake on it or again, that big hand that was there, they probably would have, you know, come up. In fact, they actually do have him do something like that in the in the actual motion comic in the last one they have him his hand go like you know clench this is also based off of the the final image from the la the first two motion comics where like um kaiser does like a little like he says something to the effect like you know like he goes Rokor! and he goes like that so like i have like a alternate hand that's like open and closed and then he has like a couple of arm areas so that's what this image is supposed to sort of be, it's supposed to be like, you know, that same shot where he's like doing like that. Or going like this.
say if you notice in the in the in the left corner in the excuse me in the right corner over there, you know, it said like there's um, all my different pieces of reference, and you can see a little bit of the Kaiser, the the Kaiser drawing from the the one that I was talking to you about that goes like that. You know, so he's got a big hole in his arm on the side there. That's where um, that's where his alternate arm, that's where the back of his, the other part of his arm would be, and then in front of it would sit the the, the big robotic arm. So right now I'm uh, just using the sketch to kind of quickly draw in the sort of, I had this idea where I like, I really like the idea of like, this doesn't actually happen in the game, but like when he char like him charging up and it kind of like, like in, you know, like in some anime where somebody charges up their hand, you charge up, they, they charge up something and then you see this kind of like energy that almost comes from the air and kind of comes into their their hand or whatever their power that they're doing like you know like Ryu where he does like the fireball and then you see like energy just kind of coming into it so that's kind of what I'm doing there with the with the the red lines which are eventually going to be colored like yellow or something like the, his, the power that he uses and that's my idea he's kind of like charging he's like has his hand he's like charging it up to, and then he's gonna my idea is like he maybe the way the game goes is like he kind of charges up his hand and he turns into a drill hand. So that's kind of like what I was kind of thinking with that. So fun story about Kaiser. So his voice actor, um, um, he's a kind of a, a regular at um, at, at, at um, Konami Cross Media. He does um, stuff for like Yu-Gi-Oh and he does a, com a couple of other voices, right? Um, so when we came back to do this new motion comic, um, apparently he had he's either in he's relocated or he was in Dubai so we're literally trying to get him to rec you know we have you know have him set up to record and he literally we had this uh, our company had this the company had to go and set up time in Dubai for him to to uh, to do voice work for these motion comics which is crazy well that looks like it's it. The inking is done on this. Um, guys, thanks a lot for joining me. Uh, it was really great that you you know came you came by and kind of hung out with me while I do this. I drew a little drill for you guys there, by the way. <laughs> and yeah, by the way, you know, come back tomorrow and we're gonna be doing some color, which is gonna be pretty awesome. Uh, I'm gonna show you how uh, how I do the color on this on this stuff. It's gonna be kind of a painted sort of style, and uh, yeah, hopefully uh, you guys can check it out. Same time from four uh, from four p.m. Uh, until um, whenever. And uh, thanks a lot. I'll just you know I'll just let the video run out here, and so yeah. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Head over to our Twitter, which is Throwdown Show. Head over to my Twitter, which is at Land, which you see on the screen, or seen on the screen. Um, 
if you feel so inclined, if you really want to get a, if you, uh, if you've been looking at the scroll on the bottom, there's a, a little code for you guys for ins from Insert Coin to pick up 20% uh, off on anything they, any of the cool game merchandise they have on there. Uh, and yeah, I hope to see you tomorrow. Thanks a lot, guys.